This is Kingsway's latest signee, Gemini Child, breaking down two of his samples. Gemini is a platinum producer from Atlanta who joined us in a Zoom call today. And to give you guys as much input as possible, we started off by a thing called Quick Gems by Gemini. Quick questions and short answers. What are the two most important things you have in your samples? Vocals and texture. Do you have a most used chord progression? No, not at all, actually. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just click around until it sounds good, to be oh, honest. Okay. Favorite effect of yours? Probably between Thermal, Shaper Box, and J37. Paid collapse, yes or no? Paid collapse, no, no, don't do it. Don't okay. even do that to yourself. Favorite uh, technique you use in your samples? I call it dry wash technique. It's something I do with my reverb. It just smooth things out. And he also shows us this technique later when we break down some of his Kingsway samples. But before that, I was wondering how he manages to cook up so efficiently. Once you get that first element down, it's really, to, for me, when I get that first element down, it's like I instantly hear everything that's supposed to be around it. And if you had a tip for us to improve our productivity. Don't force yourself to do anything. Always work when you feel like working and if you, nothing's coming out just take that break and what tips he had for somebody looking to score a king's win? be unique and don't try to copy anybody because you know you can't expect to, for them to you know accept you if you're just copying coop if you're copying frank or if you're copying you know rescue you know you can't copy anybody you have to you can take inspiration of course but you have to make sure it's uniquely you and that is able to be identified as you when it's being heard It's just simple. I started with this texture that Akira sent. And I just looped that first portion and pitched it up and stretched it up. As far as effects go, I have an EQ. Half time, I have it turned down halfway and I have it set to one bar in the plugin. Then I have Fruity Chorus, make it wide. Make it sound a little magical. Then I have Wolf Compressor to tame some of those highs because they were bouncing around a little bit too much. So next we have this sound, which is like a circus kind of sound. And so for my effects on this sketch cassette, make it a little bit gritty and dirty and wobbly. And Foodie Chorus, Turned it down a little bit. Don't know why, just, you know, just do it. This shaper box, add a little DJ scratch. Then tall filter. Then I added a bass, simple bass. Andy Fuzz preset in a bass section. Right here. But then we have this, whatever this is. Oh, the piano, it's a piano. SS Vintage Upright. So I have an EQ. Evolve Compressor. Just make it sound a little Weird. Goofy. <laughs> Goofy. Shaper box. Reversing the end of it. Very speed plug in. Have it turned down a little bit just to make it bounce. Then clever. So then I moved on to this pluck sound. Use Nami's uh, one shot for it. I wanted it to be kind of bright, but dull at the same time. That's why I added, added all these other effects. Sketch cassette. Oh, I'm getting blended by the white. <laughs> Halftime. 
because I once I actually put it in the sample in context with everything else. I felt like it was too active, so I needed to have time to slow it down a little bit. Um, thermal, I don't know where this preset is. It's just whip and heat, then the EQ, take out that body that I just put in. I don't know why. <laughs> and clever. Just give it some space. I'm pretty sure I made this on stream. And while I was doing this on a stream, Gab was in the, uh, you know, watching. And I was like, hey, you want to add vocals? And, you know, of course she did. Because, you know, Gab is just, that's a goat right there. I have some of them pitched up, some of them pitched down. Taking out lows, some of the mids. NS1 to get rid of her background noise that she had. Foodie chorus. Give it a weird sound. And now Gemini will show us how to use the dry wash technique we talked about earlier. Usually when I'm doing this, I have the room on small and I have the decay shorter than this. But since the sample was kind of big, I needed the vocal to be big, but I still wanted to have that um, sound in it. So basically what I do is I take the dry and I turn it all the way down. And I usually turn the wet all the way up or somewhere around 75 and, you know, 100. Um, then I take out some of the lows with this EQ using the early and using this EQ right here. With it, sounds like this. Or with the other vocals, it's just the same preset, just pan to the other side. And for my master chain, I just have it pitched up. That's it. Dang, you can buy the master chain on palace.com. <laughs> 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 And now the Alone in Paris sample with Lucy and Rashad, or how Gemini calls them. Crazy sample makers, crazy, crazy. I panned one to the left and I panned one to the right. With the left one, it's pitch in my effects chain. Uh, it's in mono, I have J37, acoustic guitar preset, AU pitch to pitch it up. And I have the tightness turned up to make it a little gritty. Another EQ. Ooh. The highs are getting boosted. <laughs> yeah, I wanted this to be very bright. CLA today. Ah, you look like me. I also <laughs> picked the presets because of the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of <laughs> course, you got to. They have the names for a reason. You got to pick them. Yeah, reverb. Just to make it sound like it's somewhere in a room somewhere. Actual guitar pan to the right, not pitched up or anything. Same effects. You know, just pan to the right. When watching him, I was wondering why he's using the same, I don't know, 10 effects over and over again. And that's what he said. I feel that's an important part to actually build a sound for yourself. If you're always changing your effects, you don't really have consistency because everything sounds different. Even even if like you're using the reverb, if you're using, you know, fruity reverb or um ocean waves or clever those three reverbs sound very different so even if you're changing those it might be like a subtle change in your mix but it's still going to make a difference in the complete sample but yeah it's one of the vocals he sent it's pitched up one the intro vocal Oh my goodness, the effects chain, bro. With, with this vocal, I have it panned slightly to the left. Reverb. Make it sound like he was in the room. Then NS1, J37, vocal preset, oh. EQ. Taking out those mids, doubler. 
sauce. CLA to a Vox preset. Give it that body back. <laughs> EQ. Take the body out again. <laughs> yeah. I don't well, I don't know what I'm doing, bro. I just I just <laughs> do it. I add it just because, man. I mean, if it sounds good, it sounds good. Ooh. This UAD reverb, pure plate. I love this reverb too. Ah dang. I was about to copy the whole chain and then this man is coming up with a UAD reverb. <laughs> um over here same thing i just have the reverb off on a few of these vocals Ooh. so it's more in your face J37, it makes it very aggressive. It's a bass DI preset. And then I have this perk. It's just Rashad, a vocal, but he like hit something. Don't know why he did that. So I just added it in the sample. So in the second half, I just have time to guitar and added this sub bass instead of the uh, regular. I don't know about you guys, but I learned a lot from this breakdown. And if you're wondering why Coop was honored, check out this video. No, where did my questions go? 